push stabilizers up to plug in the Starlink in. It's time to hit the road. We had a great time. We were only here for a night and a couple hours, but we will be back. We have it already wrote down. Smith Rock, we have to check it out for sure. Southwest. Heading to Walla State Park. We got a two nights stay there, possibly more, depending upon the BLM situation. We want to find some boondocking land, so we're kind of just using Walla as just a post up spot for a couple days because we, well, we don't know the area at all. It'll be our first time there. We'll use those two days to find us some free camping spots. Hopefully, get off grid like we want and test the batteries out. Our anticipated arrival is 1.32. We are pulled over, gonna do a quick pee break, but the great thing about having your home on wheels and a bathroom, so this is our little situation. We have the paddle board and the bikes, still don't have a bike rack, whoo, things must have got messy. Trash can down. Yeah, look at this, this is not usually here. <laughs> yeah, well I had to hit the brakes hard once on this one, so yeah, Any that's probably what you're seeing here. But it's yep. normally not this messy, but <laughs> it can't get that good. But we have a path to the bathroom, so easy peasy. Home on wheels is great. You know, you stop more, things like that, but you don't spend a lot more time. You know, the, the stopping is uh, out here. You know, we'll pull over on a place just like this. Usually find a, you know, a much wider space, but we'll just pull over, refresh our drinks, use the restroom, enjoy the sights chat about the drive, grab some uh, energy drinks, whatever we want from the fridge, make a sandwich. It's the perfect way to travel. We're at the fossil beds, taking a little break, let the dogs out for a minute. They got their business done, so have we. I'm done having expectations for our drives through Oregon. Like every turn that we do and every place we've been, the drives are just incredible. Yep, look at all of it. It's some um, it's amazing. Look up here. These are the balsa rocks from the lava flow. We just read that sign back there. Uh, we're in the uh, John Day Fossil Bed Monument. Absolutely gorgeous out here. We have the box installed, right? So we just have the two ratchet straps on it. So let's just go see. We are about 100 miles in so far. And it looks like it's riding good. Uh, so our little quick fix is holding strong we have zero movement in this sucker and uh everything's going great so far waiting and not spending the money has uh, paid off we're gonna keep hitting the road we got about five hours more to go so lots more pee breaks and more beauty lots more beauty for sure this is the part of the drive that i had zero expectation for and we're not even to the good stuff o'clock right now we should be there in about 20-25 minutes and hopefully check-in goes good and our spot rocks and then we are on the hunt for some BLM land we want to get out in there so we got two days to figure it out I have no doubt in my mind that we'll be able to find something but new areas are always a little tricky so we are going to use all of our best tricks to find a spot Joseph, what a town. 
so cute. That's the high school in this town. Oh my god. Looky here. We are at Walla Lake and this looks awesome. The lake is just over there. Very excited. Full we'll hook up. Only here for two nights so due to my work schedule. Our canopy with Starlink might be tricky. driving through this morning. Yep, it's 6 a.m. and we are off to go find some wildlife. Wildlife and some free camping. We got about three spots we're gonna go check out. Um, free camping potentially. Hopefully it'll fit Johnny. Some of them say tent. Some of them do list out that they are RVs. Um, they all pop up on RV friendly things that we search for. So hopefully we have some good luck. Um, but stay tuned. Hopefully we see some wildlife. Uh, we read that there's mountain goat here, which we have never seen a mountain goat yet. Um, so mountain goat, bear, um, bighorn, elk. elk, moose. Let's see what we can find. Guys, our bear hunting, wildlife hunting, turned into running away from snow. It's June 19th. And it's 32 degrees outside. We're at 5,300 feet elevation, going through Hell's Canyon. It's starting to stick, look at this. Nuts. Bearing was uh, zero success, no elk, no nothing. Well, we had about 25 deer, but we can see those anywhere. Uh, and only maybe two of them were buck, all fuzzy antlers nothing to write home about but we do believe that we found our boondocking spot for tomorrow that we're gonna try out it's a snow park location in Oregon we just we think we found a secret little nugget that have we any so these snow parks we believe from certain times are open to free camping this is what snow park looks like and wouldn't there be oh, snow wow. here? Oh my gosh. We should have taken a picture of this this morning. Yeah, this morning, morning it did not look like this. It was just starting to sprinkle. Now look at it, it's crazy. Picture this in the winter, like <laughs> it's not winter right now. This is June 19th, it's crazy. Picture this in winter, full snow, people would park and uh, unload their snowmobiles and there's tons of trails all around here. So what we plan on doing is take advantage of those with the bikes and, and hiking and things like that with Surge. But look at this huge level pad you can use out here. When you have an inverter and a, a battery and you have it wired correctly, you can have power just like you're plugged in anywhere out here in the middle of nowhere. Empty, complete level lot. In the off season, campers like me and Dare and you can park, enjoy the wildlife, get some free trailing in with your bikes, quads, motorcycles. And a complete clear sky. And a clear sky for our Starlink and so we can all get work done. It's perfect, perfect. Good morning, guys. It, Good morning. It is 7.40. We are kind of packed up. As you can see, we got most of our stuff packed up, but still a little bit tidying up to do. But we are moving. Uh, first boondock spot. And this is our first, we've mentioned it a couple times, but the first day on my new schedule. So I don't start working until 12.30 central time, which is 10.30 our time here. So perfect. 
We are gonna pack up. Ryan's already done everything outside to get us to hit the road. Um, we're gonna pack up real quick. We have a 40 minute drive. We're gonna head there, unhook, and see what the situation's about. But we it have- did, did you tell him it snowed yesterday when we were we're I did at? not, but it snowed a lot. Mm -hmm. And we got some good footage of that too. Well, we're about to drive up into it, so we're gonna see how much it actually snowed and kind of hope the roads aren't slick, but. And see yeah. stuck. So let's get on the road. I get another ride with Big John. We had to park my 4Runner in another parking lot um, here. I don't know, so in Oregon at the state park, it's 25% more for non-residents, number one. And it's $7 a night for an extra vehicle. And you can't even park at your spot. So we're going to my spot now. And we just got stopped by the Ranger because we were going out the wrong way, but you should see where our spot was. It was literally impossible to turn right or to go down this left road that they would want us to go down. Like literally impossible. Had to go out the wrong way. And she's like, oh, you guys didn't follow the arrows. Well, you go to that spot and look at it, lady. We made it to Salt Creek Summit Snow Park. This is where we are gonna be boondocking, um, probably until Saturday. That's when it will be our next free day. Um, we moved today before my new schedule started. Um, so since I'm working later, we have the flexibility to be able to do so. So um, there was one guy here yesterday. Let's see if he's still here. Otherwise, we are gonna get Big John Park set up and have some relaxing time before I start. Looks like my honey bun wants to consult. Where do you wanna park? Well, I was hoping you had that figured out. Well, I mean, over here, you know, potential wildlife, I mean, mountains. <laughs> Something tells me we, we're not going to be needing this thing. <laughs> you can see what's happening here. We're at the Salt Creek Summit Snow Park. You know, it's called a snow park because it's mainly used in the winter for snowmobiling. And as you can see right now, there's nobody here. There is one guy behind this. We just parked out of their line of sight. Ult, ult, ultimate classy move, by the way, if you're BLMing, give them some privacy. Salt Creek Summit is north of 5,000 feet. So we're up here in elevation, but I think this is also just some crazy weather happening. Again, classic freezes. We always get caught in this. I've been wanting to get the drone up here. Um, this mountain range is absolutely gorgeous when the sun hits it. You hear that? That is our furnace running strong. We got it set at about 67, 68. Just kind of see what we can take in there for now since we plan on being here three to four nights. There's no cell service. As you can see, Starlink is has zero obstructions up here. So we are operating at max speeds. We saw some deer coming up in here, but we're really hoping that some elk or you know, cross our fingers for that bear. We've been waiting for our first bear this year, our first summer bear. We've only seen bear in the fall and, and close to the winter. Awesome stuff, we're gonna be watching out the window and we are gonna enjoy ourselves out here in the wilderness. Hopefully the weather turns around a little bit. We can get out on these uh, snow park trails that are normally used for snowmobiling uh, we can get on them for hiking and, and biking and things like that. I just wanted to check in and show you what's going on. You know, typical RV travel life. You can't control everything. The weather sometimes, you know, we were on our way up here and it was uh, sunny and looking great. And now all of a sudden, boom, we're right in the snow.
anyway, we've been boondocking all day since 9 a.m. It's now 7 p.m. And I'm going to show you where we're at. Drawing a negative 20 amps right now. 12.5 volts, 13.9% state of charge. So, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. We brewed two pots of coffee. We ran the microwave three times for a minute a piece. And we've been running the TV all day, both Darren and I's laptops. Uh, we've been charging things on and off all day long. Now this is on two paralleled 100 amp Renogy Smart Lithiums with self-heating function. And let me show you why we might need it this time. It's 39 degrees out, 70 in the camper. It has been snowing all day it's snowing right now we've got some crazy weather going on it's time to start the generator and recharge the battery bank all right let's go turn on the charger let's turn on this bad boy Let's see the new converter charger, how it's handling the new batteries and see if the upgrade is paying off. So we already have a positive inflow of energy of 50.8 amps. That is exponentially higher than the last converter charger. This one is charging exactly the way it should be and as advertised. I thought I would put together a fuel cost breakdown for those of you that are curious kind of like me. I have to know how much I'm spending out here. Producing energy is one of our major expenses being off grid. Now, since we've got a couple days under our belt, I went ahead and performed a test. We have 20 hours of generator use on this test under normal conditions. And without getting too bogged down into the numbers, I'll break it down this way. I've already figured that Darren and I use 1.76 gallons of fuel per day. Now the fuel used in my generator is 91 octane or higher, otherwise known as premium gasoline. The cost of fuel was $4.90 equals $8.63 per day on average for off-grid power. So for those of you that are curious, just like me, hopefully this helps. And if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All right, guys, we are getting ready to leave our first snow park that we camped at. It was gorgeous and super, super peaceful here. We found out that the snow parks here in Oregon are free to camp in the summertime, which is incredible. They are huge, huge parking lots, plenty of space and not too many people there. It did end up getting busy. We had some four wheelers and stuff that came through, but nothing too major and we loved it. Next time on the freezes. Would you camp here if you saw this next to your site? bear trap with a real fawn leg in it. Uh, I have never seen that before. Yeah. Yeah.